Hello everyone. Here at Western, I do research in chemistry geared towards making water repellent surfaces. Now, water repellency is a widely utilized phenomenon, especially in hospitals to kill bacteria, but it's also used for more mundane things like protecting your kitchen counter. My job as a chemist is to design new materials to, make, to become water repellent. To do this, I must do three things. I must first synthesize, make new materials capable of this task. I must deposit it onto a surface and finally test its properties. Let me tell you a story of how I do this in the lab. We first start off with synthesis, making new components. To really understand chemistry on a fundamental level, you have to look at it as if it's architecture. Chemistry is architecture of the small. We build, design, and manipulate things on such small scales that we cannot see it with our eyes. Architects have blueprints for their buildings and structures. Chemists also have blueprints for their chemical structures or molecules seen at the top diagram. Sometimes making these chemical structures can be a bit of a daunting task as our starting materials will actually ignite before your eyes upon contact with air. Uh, an example of this is phosphine gas, PH3. An example of that can be seen at the top right. However, with a bit of training and some unintentional fires, we can get over this task. We can look at this chemical structure just like an architect looks at their blueprints. Everything has a purpose. So the green components impart the water repellent properties that I'm interested in. The black component acts as a scaffold holding everything together. And the blue component acts as the glue. And this leads me to the next step, that is the deposition. This blue component, when exposed to ultraviolet light, uh, from an instrument that we use in our lab, from, as you can see in the bottom right, it will undergo a chemical reaction, immobilizing it directly onto the surface that we are interested in. It is at this point that we can test its properties. Is it water repellent? How water repellent is it? But it's only when things come full circle do I get excited about my research and can share with you a bit of my philosophy. How is it possible that something we can see with our eyes, such as water repellent surfaces, manifests itself from something we cannot see, a chemical structure? What is it about fundamental nature at such a small scale, its composition and architecture, that arises to such a phenomenon? These are the types of questions that keep me up at night. But nonetheless, the way that we figure this out is by making many different chemical structures with differing architectures or compositions. We change a little bit maybe the water repellent component, the scaffold, and we observe a change in the properties that result from that. This is called a structure property relationship. And by doing this, us chemists can understand the world around us. We can connect the seen to the unseen. We're able to kill bacteria on surfaces and, of course, protect your kitchen counters. Thank you.